It's wonderful to be with you all and to share uh, this uh, few words of reflection on our first Sunday of Advent. So may my words be in the name of God, loving creator, compassionate Christ and healing spirit. Amen. Be alert. The world needs more alerts. This funny and rather silly saying speaks into the nature of the readings for today, the first Sunday of Advent, and the start of the year of Matthew. Advent, a word from the Latin venite, means come. When we pray, come Lord Jesus, we are engaging the, the meaning of Advent. Yet on the other hand, it too forms a call to us as believers to awaken from our sleepy existence. The comforting dark gives us opportunity to rest and sleep. Yet it can also lull us into a stupor where everything is dull and the rhythm and churn of life just drones on. It's not bad or good. It just happens. All three readings speak of the urging to awake, to get into the present moment, to be alert, to be present to what God is doing, to be conscious and to be engaged with what God is doing. It starts with Isaiah's prophetic and poetic expression of what God is about to do. It starts with the prediction of the elevation of the Lord's house, the holy mountain, swelled by the presence and praises of all God's diverse people, including and expanding beyond the Jewish people. The journey to the holy mountain, or God's presence, causes things to change. The venite, the come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, rallies the people to gather in the presence. There, justice comes. There, peace is found that banishes violence. <coughs> A presence that sees the very instruments of death and domination be reforged into tools for plenty, for abundance and for nourishment. Finally, the echoing the come let us go, the passage ends with come let us walk in the light of the Lord. Now awake and aware of the presence, it's time to live it out. The Hebrew term used for light is specific and hints at walking according to the statutes or the word of the Lord. In other words, live out what we know. Both the epistle reading from Romans and the gospel reading from Matthew have an eschatological flavor. That means there is an air that the world is going to radically change and that Christ's return will happen soon. The early church lived with a heightened expectation that the second coming of Christ was just around the corner, just out of reach, but close enough to almost taste it. They developed a sense of urgency that meant that certain parts of life became trivial, a potential distraction or even a trap for moral danger. So we hear Paul in Romans admonishing his hearers to avoid bodily urges and pleasures that distract from being ready and ever vigilant. So remember the parable of the seven wise and foolish virgins, virgins from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 25. Only the focused and prepared with lamps filled with oil and wicks trimmed were ready. Today's gospel reading occurs just before that parable of the wise and foolish. 
It speaks of the mysterious event of the Son of Man returning while two are in a field, one is taken and the other is left. In the 20th century, fundamentalist Christians you, um, focused heavily on what was called end time prophecy and used this passage as a literal description for the rapture, an event where Christians across the world will be taken up to be with Christ. I'm not here to say that that is either bad or good, a right or wrong interpretation, for, for I think in many ways that distracts us from some deeper experiences of the passage. Rather, in each of these readings, we can glimpse a God who is awake and with us, a God who is calling us to be equally awake and aware, not out of fear, and I repeat, not out of fear of what may or may not happen in the future. No. To be awake with God, to be expectant that God is doing some pretty amazing things in our world and some pretty amazing things in our own lives. God is awake and at work. And God is working through us slowly and patiently so that the kingdom of love can come in God's time and God's way. Be alert. Be alert to and awake to, is to never be bored. To live in constant amazement of the beauty and the horror that surrounds us. Yet the beauty always and will always exceed the horror. To be alert is to recognize that God's presence and work in us, in each other and the world, <clears throat> is nowhere near done yet. It means that we see plenty of examples of how broken our world is, how broken we are. Yet alongside the brokenness, the abiding hope of Christ. To be alert, Advent people, is to be awake to the emerging possibility of the incarnation and what it brings to our world. The deep and infinite potential for healing and restoration. Because God has come to us, entered our world, and we are forever changed. So this Advent, be alert because the world needs more alerts. In the name of love. Amen.